poppin', baby. Oh. Y'all ain't know. I go by the name of Lupe Fiasco. Representing that first thing. Graffiti can be found in cities around the globe, and Charleston, South Carolina is no exception. In fact, street art and graffiti has been present here for many years. And big names in local and national art and design have originated from Charleston street art, such as Shepherd Ferry and Obey Giant campaign. Even so, does it make it okay for these artists to put their work on property that isn't theirs? Personally, for me, and for I know, you know other artists that I'm, you know, friends with or people that I've met, you know, when you're, say, if you're in a spot that's, you know, fairly busy and you see something that you've done yourself or someone else is doing and you see it in a, an environment that it's not supposed to be, it's, you know, for me it's really breathtaking because, you know, you see some, something that somebody creatively made, you know, went out and put up, you know, for the world to see, I feel like it's almost like, you know, the city is the art gallery. It's a lot harder to put stuff up in the, in the streets than it is to do an art show because, you know, it, everything constantly gets taken down, so you put up 100% of stuff and the next day you only have 20% left and you just have to keep putting stuff on and building onto it and building onto it. And, you know, if you're, there's people out there that want to get into doing street art or graffiti, you got to know beforehand that as soon as you put something up, you know, 80% of your stuff's gonna come down. You, you can't get disgruntled or sidetracked. You just gotta keep, keep doing it, keep doing it and working. But since leaving your artistic impression on the streets doesn't really harm anyone, why is it illegal and heavily prosecuted? Many anti-graffiti groups lean on the broken window theory, which says even one broken window can lead to the decay of society. When I was a kid, I used to put, take my finger and right wash me on the back of trucks and I thought that was funny. And I thought I, I got a good thrill out of that. But see, rain came and washed it off. And there's a lot of people that took that feeling that they felt when they were a kid and went to the next level by buying a dollar for each can of spray paint at Kmart and writing wash me and what a bunch of other things. Uh, on public property and for one reason or another it gives them satisfaction. But why do these artists put their work in the streets? With so many of these artists selling their work in art shows, clothing, and stickers, is it just a guerrilla marketing technique used in today's viral marketing world? But there are still unknown artists painting streets across the world, the ones with nothing to sell and no real identity. I, I think that to talk about graffiti as a gen general thing is really very difficult to do that because there are really three um, pr uh, categories of it. You have criminals that are using the streets as a as a uh, palette to mark their territories with the graffiti. You've got um, people that are using graffiti as a means by which to be mischievous and that's the only reason why they're doing it. And then you have real artists that are using um, concrete public areas and private areas as a landscape to, to create real art. And um, that's a difficult thing to disparage. But at the same time, if you don't have permission to do that, Somebody has to incur the expense of removing it if they don't like it and they own the property. So, as an American citizen, I would have to say that all of it needs to stop. Some, some street artists or graffiti artists are, some, some, some do have morals. I try to have morals. I, I've never, personally, at least as far as I know, I've never, you know, tagged somebody's car or somebody's personal belongings like a house or a, a small business. You know, mainly what I tag, or not necessarily tag, but put street art on, put posters, stickers, or mainly like, you know, state-owned street signs, electrical boxes. Maybe, you know, occasionally, a, you know, old, you know, abandoned building, which I feel like, 
you put something up on a wall that's abandoned, you know, that nobody's, you know, renting it out as far as living in it or, or having a business. And if somebody does move into that spot, it's either going to, that building's either going to get taken down or it's going to be completely renovated. So it's going to be, your artwork's going to get, it's going to come down sooner or later. So I don't, I feel like what, what's the, what's the, you know, what's the big deal about having a poster on the side of a wall, you know, does it hurt anyone? And it's, I think all, you know, a lot of graffiti and street artists get a rap that's just as bad as, you know, a gang member or a drug dealer, and I, th you know, a lot of people when they think of graffiti or street art, they automatically think, oh, it's a gang, it's a gang, and which in some some bigger cities, you know, a lot of it is, but it's not, it's not like that with the majority of stuff. It's mainly just plain and simple. It's art. Both sides have something to prove and have for a long time. Are these artists or vandals? As often happens, some graffiti artists with ill intent have smudged the name of street art and have made it very dangerous for artists with morals to follow their dreams. It is a fine line that has to be walked between artist and vandal. You 